Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely Tuesday afternoon. The topic of today's video is going to be becoming a sellout. I think that everybody watching this channel should have the option and strive to have the option to sell out if they wanted to. To be clear and make a clear distinction here, I'm not saying that you should sell out. I'm not saying that you should get rid of your morals and your ethics. I'm saying that you should always have the option, if you wanted to, to be able to cash that in for money or a position or something else, and that you should strive for it. And I want to explain why that is. I think a lot of people assume that they are moral and ethical people because of the actions they take in life, and they think, I'm a good person. I would not do what that evil executive would do. I would not do what that evil whatever would do. When in reality, the reason that they, that, that is the case is not because they're good people, but simply because they would not have the option to because it just never presents itself. Now, because I'm bad at explaining things, I'm going to try to explain this with a couple of real-world examples. So when I started this business and started just trying to do general MacBook technical stuff like 13 or 14 years ago, I used to have mistakenly believe that I was a good, ethical, and moral person because I had low prices and I didn't rip people off and I told the truth. The reality is that when I started this business, when I was wearing a you know $1 Hanes undershirt and $5 sweatpants in Herald Square Park with no business license, no Yelp reviews, no Google reviews, Nobody trusted me. The only reason anybody would seek to go there rather than an established retail store is because I was cheap. That was what made, made my prices affordable. And also, when it came to me being honest, was I being honest because I'm a genuinely good human being that's never going to overcharge anybody? Or was I being honest simply because I had no choice? If I told somebody it's your screen and not your screen cable, they would often demand that I show them this is the case by trying a new screen cable right in front of them. The reason they would do that is because they didn't trust me, because I had no reputation. I didn't have, you know, 600 YouTube videos showing that I know what I'm doing. I didn't have a CBC News piece. I didn't have 1,400 plus five-star Google reviews more than any other MacBook repair business in a 100-mile radius. Because I didn't have that reputation, I did not have the ability, even if I wanted to be evil, to be able to actually be evil and lie to people. So it, me saying, look, I'm a good person because I'm not screwing anybody over, it doesn't really mean much when you don't even have the option to. Many people, when they don't have the option to because they haven't built themselves up enough, they haven't built up their reputation or their skill set or their accomplishments to the point where they have the ability to screw somebody over, instead of being honest with that, they'll just say, I'm a quote, good person. I'm like not like those other evil executives. And what I'm saying is I think everybody here should challenge themselves to be, have the opportunity to be able to be evil and then make the decision not to. Now, with 1,400 plus five-star Google reviews, lots of good Yelp reviews, showing up in CBC News, showing up in the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, all these other places, had a business for 13 or 14 years, 600 YouTube videos doing board repair. Now, if somebody were to walk in the store, if I wanted to, I could probably get away with doing some really fucked up shit because they trust me, because I have all this reputation, because I have everything else. Now, does that mean that I choose to do that? No. We still run an honest business, but you're not going to know if you're a good moral or ethical person until you have the opportunity to be otherwise. And the thing is, trying to become the type of person that has the opportunity or the option to be evil, to sell out, to be a bad person, to become that, you have to improve. To have the business that I have right now in 2022 required a lot of self-improvement and iterations upon the person that I was in 2008 or 2009. I had to become better at my people skills. I had to be become better at speech and just the general having random conversations with different people and being able to get my point across. I had to become a better technician. I had to become a better business person. There's there's a lot that I had to improve upon my 19 to 20 year old self to get to the point where I even had the option to be evil. And I'm glad that I did so, not just because I get to figure out, well, how evil am I? What would it take for me to sell out? But more importantly, because the journey to being able to actually sell out requires that I improve in a lot of different ways. And it's an interesting journey. So one example that I'll give you from recently, uh, I posted this in my community page. There is a for-profit company that's looking to become a benefit, for-benefit company. And, they, you know, it's a, kind of a pain in the ass to go through this entire process. And they are marketing themselves as very right-to-repair-friendly, caring about the circular economy and all this other green stuff. And they wanted me to join some sort of advisory board. So I spoke to a bunch of different people that know more about business than I do. And I asked, what should I be looking for? What should I ask for? And anything like that to, to be on this company's board in this position, given that their position in the marketplace, my expertise, and the fact that they've raised over $800 million. And, you know, the advice that I got was ask for around one to 200K. I lowballed myself, unfortunately, like I often do, and asked for something like 70 or 75K. They offered me 2,000 bucks a year, $2,000 a year. And they said, oh, well, you know, it's, it's not going to be a lot of meetings and this, that, and the other. You don't understand. For 
Me to risk my name being attached to your business with, like, again, there are many things your business could do that could ruin my reputation. If my reputation is harmed in any way, that harms my YouTube channel, that harms my nonprofits, that harms my for-profit business, many different things can be harmed. So the, the, just the risk of reputational harm is no, the 2K year is not going to Even if I wanted to be involved with your business to ensure that things were running smoothly to the point where I would feel comfortable having my name attached to it, I would have to spend a lot of time doing that, and I can't do that for $2,000 a year. Uh, further, you know, that's just, it's, it's just fundamentally, I'm not going to be on the, on the advisory board of a company that's raised over $800 million inside of a year for 2K. You know, like I, I had, I had uh, suggested so closer to 75K a year to do this and engage with your business and, you know, do all the stuff that's necessary to try and get you to where you want to be, which is, again, I, I literally pay my store manager more than that. And my business raised 7,000 bucks like 12 or 13 years ago. So, I mean, I don't think what I was asking was particularly unreasonable. And their, their face literally turned red. Like the guy's face turned red. The woman that was next to him on the Zoom call's face kind of turned red. It's like, oh my God, he actually wants money. For See, what that tells me is that I have not built up the ability to sell out because whatever it is that I have, again, me being on the board of their company would make it seem like I'm validating their mission and purpose. I hate saying this. It's disgusting, but it's unfortunately something that from my comment section, they, you guys believe this to be true. I don't. A lot of you believe that I am the face of right to repair. Again, I hate saying that. I don't want to be associated as the head of anything like that. But it, that, that seems to be the way a lot of people think. So for me to be on that kind of advisory board, that kind of makes it seem like I'm validating your mission and purpose. When people say, man, there are probably other opportunities that you could have other than doing right to repair advocacy and running an honest repair shop and this, that, and the other. Well, I like to test that on a regular basis. And when a company that has just raised $800 million who is going to be able to probably raise several million dollars more just by having my name on their website. Like, forget about anything that I could actually do or the work I could do. Just having my name on their website would probably get them, you know, approval from one or two more ESG funds that'll just dump money into their startup in spite of the higher interest rate environment we're moving into. When they say, okay, 2K a year is what we're going to be willing to offer you, what that tells me, it keeps me humble, it keeps me honest. It says, no, not really. But what that does is that it motivates me to then improve more and more with what I'm doing because I want to be at a point where somebody would actually say, having his name stamped next to our company would, be, would seriously mean something. Let's buy him for 200K or 400K or 800K a year. Does it mean that I would take the offer? No. Does it mean that I would take any offer? No. But it would mean that I'm becoming more effective at what it is that I'm doing. So regardless of whether or not I would actually sell out, I'm always gauging what it is I'm doing and the effectiveness of what I'm doing based on whether or not I have the option to. Apparently, that is not worth more than $2,000 a year. Now, it's not even about whether or not I should be mad about this or not, but the point is I have not built up enough that I have the ability to sell out if I even wanted to. Because even if I did want to be evil and just use my name to rubber stamp on things to get money, even if I didn't believe in causes, it ain't there. I look in my inbox every day, the, off, the offers are not there. I think the, you know, like, it's usually like, here, you want 25 bucks to promote some stupid Android game or shit like that. Or another example, I'll see in my comments from time to time, people saying, you know, Lewis is a good guy because he could have gotten millions of dollars from these companies to perhaps not lobby in favor of right to repair, and he still keeps doing what he does anyway. Again, that's not really a quite about morals and ethics, because that's never been something that's offered to me. Think about it. Up until just two weeks ago, when that New York State bill passed for a right to repair, there was virtually no progress made for seven years. Now, what I do is I strive to be the type of person that has the ability to sell out. Does that mean that I am going to stop doing what I'm doing? No. What it means is I want to be so effective in my right to repair lobbying, my grassroots activism, and everything else that I'm doing. I want to be so effective that somebody from Microsoft or Apple or Samsung or CTA comes up to me with a bag of cash and is like, yo, here's five million. Can you go away? Not because I would take the five million, but because that would mean at that point that what I was doing was actually effective. People don't try to buy you. They don't try to get you to become a sellout unless you're actually effective in what it is that you're doing. If you are effective in what it is that you're doing, then you'll have the opportunity to, quote, sell out and become evil. But you need to actually have that option in order to at least consider yourself a moral or ethical person. You need to have the option to do something that's evil and be a piece of shit. There is a reason that I have not had that offer come to me where somebody walks up to me and and says, here's a bag of money, will you stop doing what you're doing? Because for at least seven years of my life, I spent time lobbying for right to repair and getting nothing done. I was ineffectual. I was laughed out of state legislatures. I never got anything accomplished. And that's the point. I want to become so productive in what it is I'm doing there that people are begging me to take bags of money to stop doing what I'm doing. Then I'll know 
am I really a good person or am I a piece of shit? But more importantly, once I'm at the point of being able to even figure that out, it'll mean that I've done a lot more for the community, a lot more for my business, and a lot more for the other businesses in this community if I get to the point where that's an option. And most people watching this video, if they decided to become evil and be a piece of shit, there's no bag of money waiting for them. There's no easier life waiting for them. So it's very easy when you're young and idealistic about the world to say, I'm a good person. I would never do that because I'm moral and ethical, this, that, and the other, when you don't have the option to. But the reason that I don't I want people to start with that as their default is because I want you to strive to be the type of person that has the option to sell out if you wanted to, because that's how you improve. I want to be so good at right to repair advocacy that people from all these different companies are like, yo, Lewis, we'll buy your business for $20 million. Here's a retirement house. You want a job, a cushy job is on the board of this whatever company just to get you to go away. That would mean that what I'm doing is effective. That would mean that what I'm doing is actually pissing some people off, that it should be pissing off, and that would mean that I'm good at my job, and I want to be good at my job. I want to be good at what I do, and one of the ways that I'll be able to tell if I'm good at what I do is people are actually willing to buy me to get me to stop. And above all, you just kind of learn something about yourself in the process. Now, to be clear, again, I don't see myself as some moral or ethical or humble human being. If somebody walks up to me and says, here's $500 million, stop what you're doing, I can't say how I'd answer that, man. $500 million would be incredibly, incredibly convincing. I'm not going to pretend that like, I I'm not able to be tempted in any way, shape, or form. But what I will say is that I always strive to get to the point where something like that is plausible. Because if I were even within 10% of that being plausible, it would mean that I'm very, very close to achieving my goals. And it would mean that I'm improving a lot in my ability to implement my mission and purpose into the world. And that's what I think all of you should be doing. Don't assume that you're a good person simply because you don't do evil things. Let's be real. If you had the option to do something that was evil or horrible or greedy, would you actually be able to get ahead? And if you're a person that makes $100,000 a year, but you can make $2 million a year if you do something that's a little evil and you choose not to, Fine, you get to call yourself a moral or ethical person. If you make 15 bucks an hour, and if you did something a little bit evil or scummy, you're gonna make you know, 15, 50 an hour and you don't do it, I just don't think that you get to, to give yourself that title just yet. And I would suggest that you not do that because again, a lot of people assume that they are good people when they are actually people who simply are incapable of gaining from doing something bad. Become somebody that actually has something to gain from doing something evil. And then well, that'll be a bit of a test of your character. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now. Actually, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to redo that outro. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. These sunglasses are so douchey, but I love them. All right. See you in the next one.